In this lesson, we're going to set up the inputs in our character's blueprint graph. All right, so go ahead and double click on the BP My Character, and this will bring you to your graph. Make sure you're under the graph mode. And let's create our move forward event. So we're going to right click um, in our graph, and then we're just going to type in move forward, and you'll see that we have this event. Notice the icon here. Left click, and that should bring in your input axis move forward. Now we want to be able to press the W key or the S key to get that to move forward along that, but we need to add the movement input, meaning that we need to be able to get the um, scale value, whether it's a positive or a negative. And so to do this, we're going to use a function, and we're going to right click, and we're going to type in movement, oh, let's see if I can type today, movement input, and you see add movement input. Now, what we'll do is we'll take the execution, and we're going to left-click and hold on that. That's going to bring out a wire, and we're going to wire that to the execution input of this function. So once that's together, any time that we press the W key or the S key, this is going to fire off, and it's going to go into this function. Now, we need to tell it exactly what to do. Now, the target is going to be on the game object that this blueprint is on. In, case, uh, in this case, it's going to be our character, as you can see. So we don't need to do anything to that. Now we do need to tell it what the scale value needs to be. Right now it's going to just set it to 1, and that's going to move our character forward um, any time that we press this. But we also have the S key tied to this axis. And so we want to be able to change that to negative 1 um, if that key is pressed. So we're going to take this axis value, and we're just going to drop it in here. So anytime we press W, that scale value is going to be positive 1. If we press the S key, that's going to be negative 1. Now we need to adjust the world direction. So what direction is this going to move? Uh, we want to go ahead and get our control rotation on this. So let's go ahead and right click, and we're going to type in control. Actually, let's just say get rotation. And we should see that here, get control rotation. That's for our pawn. And again, it's going to be the target that um, this blueprint is on in case in this case, it's the character. We need to return the value um, that the rotation is set to. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break any rotation that could be there whenever we start the game. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to break rotation. Okay, so you'll see break rot. Go ahead and left click on that, and we're going to set that value uh, to here. Okay, so it's going to return that value, and it's going to set it to break. Now I need to go ahead and make the rotation, and I'm going to set it back to zero. So we're going to go ahead and right click, and we're going to say make rotation. You'll see that there. And then we just are worried about the yaw right now. So we're going to go ahead and just drop that there. And then we're going to return this value to um, our world direction. Now we can't do that right from here. You'll notice that it's not allowing us to now put that into the world direction, because it's not the same type of input and output. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it to our forward vector. So we need to get that. So we're going to go ahead and type in, we'll right click, we'll say get forward, and you'll see you get forward vector. Now you'll notice that we can plug in this input here, and that's going to get um, that vector rotation. And then we're going to return that value to our world direction. All right, great. So what does all of this do exactly? It's just resetting any rotation values that may be on the player. And we want to set that um, properly. So that way, whenever we press the W key and we're moving forward, um, that the, the character is actually moving forward okay, in that. Now, we also want to do this for the right vector as well. We want to be able to add that to our input direction. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll uh, right click, and we're going to say get right vector, okay? And you can see it right here. And instead of going through all of this again, we don't need to do that. We're just simply going to take the return value and plug it into here. And then all I have to do is plug that into another input uh, for that. So that's going to give me my A and D movement. So you can select this. You can hold down. Um, shift, uh, actually no, it's control W to duplicate. Uh, we're going to plug this in here, and then we're going to take 
um, the execution, actually let's take this return value, plug that into world. We're also going to get our scale value. Now we don't want it from our forward vector. This is going to be used for the A and D key. So we want to move in the right vector or the uh, right axis. So we're going to right click and we're going to say move right. You'll see that that comes up with our event. Okay, we'll put this right down here. And then I'm going to grab my execution wire. We're going to plug it into here. And then we need to get our scale value, and that's going to be also derived from our move right. So there is the input that we need for the keyboard, W, A, S, and D. So just to keep things organized, let's go ahead and select everything. And we're going to go ahead and hold down C, or just hit C, and that will create a comment. We'll call this um, keyboard movement input. Okay. There we go. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to get our mouse input. And so we want to be able to move, uh, we want to be able to look around uh, left and right. And so to do this, we'll go ahead and start out with our event. We're going to right click and we're going to look for turn. And there is our event there. So we'll plug that in. And then we need to um, add that to our movement input. Now this is going to be a little bit easier. Um, let's go ahead and right click. And let's look for add controller yaw input because whenever we're turning, we're going to be turning around uh, the y axis, okay? And so, or let's just say the up axis in this case. So we're going to say um, controller, actually, let's do yaw input. And there we go, add controller yaw input. So all we need to do is just simply tie the execution. Uh, input and output together, and then we'll just add our axis value. That's all we need to do for that. Uh, let's also do the thing, same thing for the um, look up axis. So we're going to right click and we're going to say look up, and we'll find the event. And then we're going to want to be able to look up and down. So that's going to be around the x axis. Okay, so this is going to be pitch. Okay, so we're going to come in and we're going to right click. And we're going to add a controller. Let's actually just type in pitch. There's pitch input. And then we're going to put that in there. And then we're going to add that to our value, just like so. And then one final thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, let's make a comment really quick. We also want to add in our jump uh, functionality. So let's go ahead and just type in mouse input. And there we go. So there's our mouse input. Let's go ahead and take this whole comment. Let's just pull that over out of the way. And then let's add in our jump axis, or action, I should say. So there is jump. And oops, that's the function. I want the event. Let's try that one more time. Jump, and there's the action event. There we go. So there's that. And then we're basically checking to see if it's been pressed. And so if it has been pressed, you can simply left click and drag off of this execution. And then we can type in jump. And you'll see that we have our jump function. And it's going to go ahead and jump. That function has already been created. It knows exactly what to do. And then simply select around those, hit C to make a comment, and we'll say jump. Perfect. All right, so this should be everything that we need. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to test this. And there's a little bit of setup that goes into this process. And so we're going to go ahead and set those things up next in our next lesson. So make sure you compile and save that, and I'll see you in the next lesson.